Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Fiend Folio. We are jumping in again. I am not sure what I want to do today. Let's have a little look-see. Uh, let's do a Mastema run. It's been a little bit of time since we've done a classic Mastema run, I think. Uh, so let's give it a go. And I am officially back. I am back from my holiday. I went on holiday. Oh, that was a bad hit. Um, I went on holiday for um, a long weekend. The Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I had a good time. Now, you may be wondering, where did I go? Okay, first of all, let's check what this is. That's just Guppy's paw that's resprayed. Let's take this. Absolute gamble. Um, well, I say it's not an absolute gamble, because we still have a Eternal Heart keeping our Black Heart alive. But, definitely a little risky. A little more risky than I should have gone, most likely. But, getting money equals power really early on is good, because it kind of sets up a precedent for us for, like, what we do next. There, you see. You see? Foolish being. I think I want to bomb those fool's gold rocks, but I'd rather just keep my money right now. I'm probably going to die here. It'd be a real good start to the episode if I just instantly died straight away. Um, Back from my holiday. Back on the grind. I've told you guys before, though, if I take any time off of playing Isaac, if I have a single day where I don't play Isaac, all of the skill, all of the skill that I acquire just goes right out the fucking window. <laughs> literally just disappears and never returns um so that's that's just gonna be how it is um so apologies for the early loss and the stupidity that has unfolded in front of your eyes um anyways yeah um i went on holiday for a little bit but i didn't go abroad or anything like that i do not like the little minx thingy i'm gonna take whatever this is wax wing Waxwing gives us a lot of stat upgrades. I don't actually know how the item functions apart from on Icarus, but I'm happy to have flight. Oh, I'm not so happy to... Okay, that's the way it works. We lose the flight in the floor. So, this is going just as well as uh, just as well as we could have hoped here. Yeah, this is... This is not going... Not going too hot. I'll be honest. Don't really know how to deal with that room with the slappy boys. Let's go for another quick death here, I think. Let's uh let's let's speed run two deaths in one episode. Quick as we possibly can here. Forget we have flight and accidentally walk into a direct wall there. Take out these guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyways, question of the day today is um Where where's the next place you plan to visit? I think I've asked this before, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's been a little while, and it's holiday related, and I just went on holiday, so... But yeah, th there's the second death of the episode there, real quick. We'll get that out of the way. Um, I think we ought to stop taking two heart deals, but... <laughs> am I going to? No, no, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna take another two heart deal if it's there, and you know I am. You know I am. Hello, two heart deal. <laughs> Nah, I won't take that one, actually, because I don't want that. We got the D8, which I'm honestly a little upset about. Um, the D8 isn't a really what I would think is a Devil Deal item, but there you go. Um, yeah, but I guess it's holiday related, and yes, it's not maybe the holiday you thought. I have mentioned it in a video before, can I? I, I think I have, at least. I'm pretty sure I have. Anyways, I went to Edinburgh. I went over to Scotland, and I'd never been to Scotland before. It was really enjoyable. It was really, really good. Hey, there's some pennies. That'll help for our money equals power that we should have had. But, guppy item there. Very, very nice to see. Um, we could maybe get an early guppy if we get lucky. I'm honestly probably not going to use the D8 again. We got a fuckload of damage. We lost a bit of fire rate, but I'm, and I, I mean just a bit. Um, and we gained speed, so I'm actually pretty happy with how things panned out there. But yeah, so I'm a little, I'm a little rusty on the old, uh, the old Isaac. We are fast approaching 10k though. We're fast approaching 10k. I say fast approaching. The subs have definitely slowed down in the, uh, in the past month or so. But eh, it's to be expected. There's nothing super new going on with Isaac at the minute. Revelations was sort of the last big thing, and I don't expect my subscriber count to keep booming like crazy after it did with Fiendfolia. Um, anyways, we're, we're approaching um, 10k and. For those of you that don't know, I have promised many a people from for basically the entire four years I've been doing YouTube that 10k is when I'm going to do my face reveal, which is going to be interesting. Um, it's probably only going to be one video. I'm not going to keep my face in videos after that point. It's just people interested, so why not? 
Uh, really, give me a golden penny in a large room? Do you, do you have to do me dirty like this? Um, that's pretty good. That's very good. Honestly, I'll take the rotten as well. Also, double rotten hearts. That's new. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing that. But also, I kind of wanted to gauge from you guys what you want me to do with Isaac for 10k. I've got a few other ideas for what to do for 10k. Like, I don't think 10k is going to be anything super special other than the face reveal. I might do a stream or something to fit along with it as well. Um, I'll see how, sort of what where where my 10k lands. Because I have a feeling that 10k is going to land exactly over the Christmas holiday while I'm not here. Which is going to be super inconvenient, but it's just going to be how it is. Um, but yeah, uh, I, um, I'm interested to see what you guys want, want me to do with Isaac. Because obviously I'm still loving Isaac. I'm still playing it a lot. Uh, you guys are still clearly enjoying it. We're, get, we're still getting like 1,000 to 2,000 views a video, which is fantastic. Thank you all for the continued support on the series. I'm really, really glad that I'm able to play a game that I still thoroughly love. And you guys still thoroughly love to watch it. Um, at least a good majority of you. I'm pretty sure Secret Room's here. Um, but, saying that, saying that, things, of course, do get old over time. Things get staler. So, I'm sort of wondering what people might want me to do with the series. I kind of forgot that this costed HP. But, at the same time, stopwatch for two hearts is pretty banging. Um, so I'm going to take that. Also, I thought it was a 0.3 speed up. Why does it give me so much speed? Anyways, um, maybe I got a speed multiplier. Is that a thing? Off of D8? Does D8 do that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like some ideas from you guys as to where you'd, where you'd like to see the Isaac series go. Um, what you'd like me to see do with it. Do you want me to keep it exactly as it is and we just keep running back runs as is? Do you want me to start a new save file, like completely fresh save file, like zero progress and try and redo Dead God? That could be interesting. I'm sure some people out there might want to see that. Uh, would you like me to do some, some weird stuff? So, like do some more like crazy challenge run sort of episodes where people give me ideas for challenges to do? Um... I don't know. There's, there's, there's a few different paths, but if any, even even suggestions that I haven't listed, please do let me know what suggestions you have. I'd be very interested to know. Um, we've got the Pact. Okay, I'm going to take a really, really bad gamble here. Actually, eh, I'm, pr I'm almost certain that's the Pact. And with it being the Pact, it would keep us alive if we took it. But I'm, I'm going to at least play out the floor before I do that, just to make sure I don't uh, sack this run off. But because it's a resprite of the Pact, it's a little different than what I'm used to it looking like. So I don't want to be too rush. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, we've actually got a really good way of doing this now, and we got that as well. That was not what I wanted, but it did give me a key, which gave me that. Okay, let's go do it now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'd definitely like some uh, some input and feedback. That is the pact. Good, good, good. Um, impact and feedback on on where we want things to go because I do think it's worth I do think it's worth us looking into doing a little bit of a shake up, doing something a little different. I think at the minute my mind's fairly set on a new save file. I feel like that's like one of the simplest ways that's also pretty interesting that we can spice things up a little bit because um, we're actually then going for completion marks and we're trying to actually unlock vanilla items again, stuff like that. Um, and it also means it'll increase the uh, how common some of the modded items are too, which could be kind of interesting. So that's kind of my, my baseline idea right now. But if there's other things you guys want to see with Isaac, please do let me know. Because, yeah, like, like I said, I really would be interested. I know at this point, a lot of you guys that are, that are here watching probably aren't here as much for Isaac anymore. I'm sure a lot of you still enjoy the Isaac gameplay, but I would I would hazard a guess that the vast majority of you are here for my delightful and insightful commentary, which is uh, strange. <laughs> um, we'll take that. Fraudulent fungus, that's actually pretty decent for us, and it's make, made, us look in, made us look like a horrible monster. And I think I'm going to take Angel Path here, and we get Pascal Candle. Pretty good. Take Pascal Candle. We also get a Holy Mantle for that as well. And we continue onwards. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure, like, probably a lot of you, it's, it's more about the commentary and maybe, maybe partially 
just the daily routine of it all. I know for a fact that um, when I was a little younger, unfortunately, I don't really have the time for it now, now that I do my YouTube and a full-time job. But when I did have the time for it during um, school, university, college, all that sort of good stuff, uh, Northern Lion was was very much a big part of my routine. And regardless of, regardless, I mean, I, I only really watched his Isaac series. I did watch other things he made, but it was mainly about the Isaac series. But it, I wasn't really watching it for the Isaac gameplay, if you know what I mean. We got Botfly here, which people did inform me. I utterly and stupidly messed up in a previous episode that I pre-recorded and didn't realize I had a spin down dice for Botfly and it spins down to bloody Damocles, not Damocles, uh, death certificate. What a wasted opportunity. Unfortunately, my very gooberish brain did not uh, make the connection or spend the iota tiny second of time to figure that out. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But it's in the past now. Also, it's technically comment bait because everyone commented about it. So, <laughs> not that I meant to do it, but let's let's pretend I did and call it comment bait. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of you, it's probably more you're watching as part of a daily routine, um, just enjoying the runs in the background. Ch maybe maybe not even watching and just listening and then just checking in when when it sounds like something interesting's happened. I know that. That's the way that I uh, I watched a lot of creators um, as well. And I don't take any offense to that at all. In fact, I encourage it. I try to keep my um, episodes reasonably... Do you know what? We'll go for this. Um, I try to keep my episodes reasonably... Um, do I want to take this? I don't think I do. I think this is a lot better for our current situation. Um, I try to keep them reasonably like audio only. like As in, like obviously, the visuals are a big part of it. But I try to... I try to make sure that even if someone's just listening, they're pretty clued into what's going on on screen. And if not, there's a story for them to listen to um, or some sort of random antic that I'm talking about that they can kind of just tune out to and uh, and get some rest. So, Because I, I really enjoy that myself. So, um, yeah, a lot of you, it might not really matter. You, you might be like, do whatever the hell you like. Um... But I still would like some input from those of you that do uh, that do actively watch, because like there's there's a few there's a few reasons. One, obviously, um, I I just want to shake things up for myself and you guys, but also just to bring back some of the older viewers. Um, of course, uh, as as tends to be with with any series that's running for a long time, viewers start to, start to drop off um, as time goes by, and I've certainly noticed, um, if only a little bit, that the views have started to drop off a little bit. As I said, I don't really mind. It's kind of to be expected. But if there's something maybe a little a little fresh, a little new that we could do to bring a few people back, then uh, I wouldn't mind giving it a go. And I think one thing to do is like just just try something new and spice up the thumbnail. Make the thumbnail a little... Change, change the colour palette. Make it a little more snazzy or something. Um, do some stuff with that and hopefully that'll uh, help out. I know that my money's not really any good here, but I'll check that out. And I'm not that bothered about that. Unfortunately, I cannot pay... For those with a holy mantle. I really wish they worked like that. Unfortunately they don't. Because if so, Wooden Cross would actually be super useful. We'd be able to get like a soul half a for each floor. But yeah, this um this trinket is super, 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 super good with our prayer card. So we're always getting a charge on the uh, on the boss fight, regardless. Ooh, we got perfection. Now that is that's that's a potential take, but I honestly don't think we take it. For the pure and simple fact that we could lose it, whereas we can't lose the hairpin, and the hairpin's doing us some real good right now. Did I um did I take anything from my item room this floor? I don't think I did. I can't remember what was available, but I will go back and check it out just to make sure it's not something that I would have wanted. I just didn't have the health for at the time. Rather no, especially considering we've got high speed. It was Botfly, and then we got a random. I'm going to take the random. Uh, Multidimensional Baby. I actually quite like Multidimensional Baby. I think he's pretty good. Um, it's not always useful. Um, you, I don't really play around him as such. But I try. I, I, I got to say, I, I can get some use out of him. Especially if you like walk into a room and just stand still. Fire some shots, you get him doubled. It's kind of free, really, isn't it? Uh, so if the room allows for it, kind of useful. Especially if you get, like, herming or anything like that, then that makes it really good, but obviously that's, like, a specific circumstance. But right now, really, the uh, the thing that's carrying us is kind of Pascal Candle. I've not really spoken about it since we actually picked it up, but it's doing a really good job. 
of, uh, of, of just upping our fire rate to acceptable levels. It's not crazy levels. It's only 5.17, which eh, is a little bit higher than uh, the cap. So it's not great, but it's pretty darn good considering it was like two before. Another moral heart here. I, I forget, can a moral hearts be used in deal with the devil trades? I'm pretty sure they can, so they're still pretty useful to have. But yeah, at the minute we're kind of like destroying rooms, to be honest. We're going through them really fast. But yeah, I feel like um, the, the Fiend Folio hype has fully worn off now, which means that having Fiend Folio as the thumbnail isn't as necessary. So we can change up the color scheme, change up a few things. Maybe people want me to do like a new save file with a twist. I don't know what that twist might be. But if people would like to see something like that, that could be interesting. I don't, I don't know what that would be, but... I'm sure people have some interesting ideas. I know that um, BD1P is doing a new save file with the randomizer model at the minute, which randomizes unlock orders. Different things, like, basically, when you do a, a specific challenge that normally, for example, unlocks Judas, it won't unlock Judas, it unlocks something completely random. It could unlock Death Certificate. It's, there's, there's all sorts of weird stuff going on. Um, that might be a little bit too out there, but if people really would like to see it, then I could be open to it. New save files are always fun and various arrangements me and him had discussed doing a co-op um a co-op version of that at some point but we're just busy people <laughs> i do want to do more stuff with bd1p we have at least two things lined up right now um let's take this vega decent uh, we have at least two things lined up right now um the hell what would that hand come from Leech! My baby Leech! And Headless Baby. Lovely. That is the conjoined machine. <laughs> Gimme conjoined. Ooh, this is a little bit of tricky business here. I'd like Leech to just get in there and do this for me, but... I'm not gonna ask that of you, 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 you sweet lad. You've done plenty. You've done plenty. Anyways, I haven't spoken one tiny little bit about my trip yet. And I've, I've got I've got a few videos to spread it out over. So I'd have to tell the whole lot right now. But I just kind of realized we're like 17 minutes into this video. And I've not said anything about my holiday. Considering I kind of like hyped up at the start of the video that I was going to be talking about it. So I apologize for any of you that have been patiently awaiting the tales of good old Edinburgh, good old Scotland. Um, but yeah, it was really good. We, like I said, we went down for like a long weekend, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's the Monday now, so I, I, we got back a few hours ago. Um, yeah, we're good to go. Uh, and and we, we ended up getting up to quite a lot, to be honest. So we, we, we one of the big reasons we went is because the Christmas markets are on. Uh, my city, as well as a few other cities in the UK, have like Christmas markets starting on like December 1st. Where it's just like a collection of uh, of like stalls for different companies and normally like independent companies where they come in and they sell their sell, sell their goods and there's normally some nice food there, there's some rides there and stuff. And we went and honestly the markets were decent, but they ended up not really being sort of the big thing of the trip. Um, Immaculate Conception isn't really something that I care about. I think I'm just gonna bounce, unfortunately. Um. Yeah, the markets didn't, like, they were, they were decent, they were enjoyable, but they, they didn't really end up being, like, that sort of big of a thing uh, for the trip. So, let's still sort of think. Our first day, we kind of just went exploring, um, of course, did a good amount of drinking. We actually, like, met up with some Americans. I mean, one thing I didn't expect is, I thought, in Edinburgh, everyone would be Scottish. As, you, as they would be, considering it's in Scotland. Nope. Nope. I would say probably more people there that I heard speaking, like, just in crowds and in passing. I probably heard more American people there than anyone else. There were so many Americans there. It was strange. Um, but anyways, we got talking to, like, this group of Americans that were there studying. They were, like, in their 20s, a little bit younger than us, but they were out drinking, obviously, because they were, like, 20. They, they normally couldn't drink in their country, which is kind of interesting. Um, but they, they were a laugh. We had a good laugh with them. And yeah, we just kind of went exploring and... Ooh. Okay, you, you died. Good, good, good. Oh, oh. oh, I finally lost my... Um... What's going on with you two? You've only got green boys left. Oh. That's okay. We lost our uh, thingy finally. It's, it's cool. Um, yeah, kind of went exploring. 
went and got some good food and stuff. But mainly on the first day, that was it. We went to this pizza place that was amazing as well. Um, my girlfriend got some haggis, which was actually not bad. It wasn't terrible. I always thought haggis would be awful. It wasn't bad. Uh, but then, like, on the next day, we went and went to, like, this pancake place. That was awesome. It was, like, a, a sort of pancake bar thing where you, like, craft your own pancakes and you pick all the things you want on it. Created just this amazing sort of breakfast pancake mess. It was lovely. It was very filling, though. Um, and we're exploring again. We ended up doing, um, this was uh, last night, actually. We ended up doing a ghost tour, which was really enjoyable. Basically, it's just like a double-decker bus that just drives you around a lot of the um, so-called so haunted spots and um, stuff in Edinburgh. Because Edinburgh's actually got quite a lot of history behind it in terms of, like, murders and um, executions and hangings and witch trials and all that sort of stuff. I think we, we went to one pub that was, like, known to be one of the places that they put witches on trial. Um, it was really interesting. The, the ghost tour was kind of like a th theatrical performance. I don't know exactly what to call it, but I expected what it would be was we'd get on the bus and it would it would be um, it would just drive us from spot to spot and tell us information like facts about each area. But that wasn't really what it was. It was more so they had um, a dri like someone driving and then someone on the bus with us uh, that was kind of like giving us this sort of running commentary on the areas we were going around, but also turned it into like a theatrical performance where they had like the lights flickering and like smoke coming into the bus and um, and like the monitors were flickering, like uh, were like going on and off and there was like visuals of like like hands and like people banging on the bus and it was really cool. And the, the person that like did it all, the person that was like the sort of guide, was really enthusiastic and into it. And bear in mind, this person, it's their job to do this, and they probably do about five or six of these a day, where it's the exact same performance, and they're doing it, like, day in, day out. Or, or at least maybe just on the weekends. I don't know if it's day in, day out. But anyways, it's a lot. And this guy was still so enthusiastic and so into it. And honestly, it was really nice. It was it was not what I expected. I, like I said, I expected it to be more factual than theatrical. Um, but even still, even like when it when it started off to be more of a theatre performance, I was like, oh, this is going to be kind of shit. This guy's not going to really give a crap because he does 40 of these a day. And it's just going to kind of be a bit lame. But no, it was it was really interesting. Um, really enjoyed it. We learned a good amount. We actually got to get off the bus at one point and then uh, walk around a graveyard uh, where they sort of explained some of the um, some of the stuff in the graveyard. Uh, I think it's Beck and Hare is the name of them, was, was one of the things they spoke about, if you didn't know about them. If I'm even calling them the right thing, it might be a different name that I'm completely getting wrong. But basically, they were, I don't know what year it was, it, maybe the 1800s, 90, I think it was 1900s most likely. Um, there was uh, a, a group of people that would um, s sell bodies to um, the university for research and they would make a good amount of money out of this and the way that they get those bodies is by robbing the graves um and uh they eventually didn't really have many bodies left to sell because they'd kind of dug them all up and the only way they could get more is by waiting for people to die which while it happened fairly often it wasn't really often enough so they started killing people so that they could sell the bodies. Um, and they kind of explained how, how they got found out and everything. And in the actual... Um, what we got here? Pretty good. Um, right. Down we go. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. And then, like, they also explained, like, the graveyard that we're in. There was a watchtower, and the watchtower was built specifically to stop grave robbers after that, like, incident was found out. They also explained about how um, a lot of people back then used to be uh, buried alive by accident, mainly because um, when people went into comas, they didn't really have a good way of, uh, of telling if they were alive or not, and so they'd just bury them. But then, obviously, there was incidents of people being buried alive so what they do is they'd add, they'd like attach a piece of string that went all the way up from the the coffin up to a little bell 
above the surface. And basically, if the person below started struggling, started moving, the bell would ring. Um, and I'd heard of this concept before, but what I didn't know is how many sayings came from this one thing. So the graveyard shift, the, the, the term graveyard shift comes from this because the person that would have to sit all night and listen for that, well, all night and day, and listen for that bell would be um, the person on the graveyard shift. So I never knew that that's, uh, that's where that term came from. Also, the, the term dead ringer um, comes from that as well. Uh, Abel. Not great. We did get conjoined out of it, so I don't mind. Yeah, um, the term dead ringer. I never knew that dead ringer came from that as well. Um, that was a pretty big surprise. What was the other one? There was another term that came from it as well. I can't remember which one it was now. Ah, oh, bugger. That's going to really annoy me if I can't think of what it was. What it was. It was dead ringer, graveyard shift, and there's another one too that came from it. I can't remember. I'll, tr I'll try. I'll try and think of it and come back to it. But right now, I, I cannot remember what it was. But anyways, it was just really, really interesting. Um, and it was really cool that we got to like get out sort of late at night and go walk around a graveyard. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, we got up to a few other things. Oh, we did a lot of uh, eating, a lot of drinking. We uh, we played a AR darts, which was kind of fun. It was like a a darts board that was projected onto a wall rather than it being a darts board itself. But because of that, what the hell's hitting me? Is there like creep hitting me or something? Because of that, you were able to play a lot of different games and stuff because they could like project scores and like different objectives and stuff. And we got to play some really cool games. There was like one where you had to hit on the dartboard a certain like number, certain numbered segments of the of the other team. And if you hit their segments three times in a row, then you became the killer. And you could then, sorry, no, you, if you hit your segment three times in a row, you'd become a killer. And then once you were a killer, you could hit their segment three times in a row to kill them and, um, and like win the game. So it was kind of like a tug of war of who could, who could hit their segment the fastest and then who could hit the other person's segment the fastest. It was pretty cool. It was especially good because I was by far the best at darts out of everyone there. I did end up teaching, um, because it was me, my girlfriend, and then two of our friends um, that ended up going on this holiday. I ended up teaching them a little bit of how to play darts. Because I've been playing darts for quite a while. Um, probably, I don't know when I first played darts. But I, I've probably been playing darts, like, seriously. Not as in, like, being a child just throwing darts at a board. Well, since I was probably, like, 11 or 12. Um, I never played it, like, professionally or anything like that. I never played it, like, as a competition. But... Uh, my dad used to, like, have a specific club that he went to. There used to be a club right next to my parents' house. And then there was, once that one got knocked down, there was one a little further down the road that my dad used to go to all the time. So me and my mum and my sister would often go along because he would play a game of darts. My mum would get a drink or whatever or talk to some friends. Um, and uh, whenever he'd go, I'd obviously come along. Ooh. Oh, right. Okay. That was kind of nice. That was, like, all the different various types of hearts. That's cool. Um, we got here three dollar bill. Sounds kind of interesting. Give us, give us a whack. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. More range, the better. We got decent range, but not amazing range. Um, and yeah, so I just like play darts, and uh, I got decently good at it. I ended up getting like my own little dart set. Um, and my own darts board at home. And I got decent at it. I got decent at it. It wasn't amazing, but I was decent. And I didn't think, I haven't played darts in a really long time, so I thought, nah, all that old knowledge is not going to have carried over. But I'm still pretty decent. I ended up being pretty good. I got, uh, a, I got like two triple 20s, three triple 20s while we were playing. Which I thought was pretty decent. I want to calm down, my dude. Honestly, if you could break more rocks, I would not be. I would not be upset. I'll be honest. See, the homing's really good with um the uh what's it called conjoined. Very happy about that. So if we can leave it until we get the homing, that's pretty nice. But I think I just need a bit more range. But as I said, homing, 
with um with the conjoined baby. Not a conjoined baby. You know what I'm trying to say. No, I just rerolled my stats by accident. What did I end up getting? Okay, my fire rate is wicked fast now. I did lose quite a lot of damage there. I gained a lot of range though. Okay, my speed got destroyed. I'm seeing this now. Um, but I don't know. We didn't lose like that much damage, and we gained an insane amount of fire rate. Um, plus a lot of range. I think this might be worth it to keep. Ooh, okay, that heart is gone. I'm not sure. This might be worth keeping. I suppose I could keep re-rolling until I get something I want. Let's try that. Okay, I, I, all I did there is gain speed. I got nothing but speed. I actually lost a lot of fire rate and a lot of damage. Not what I wanted at all. This is bad. This is really bad. Okay, one more wave and then we get to reroll again. I should have stick with that last one. That last one was really good. Eight fire rate, six damage. I forgot I had Belly Jelly. Really? You had managed to avoid that, you little shyster? I was mainly doing that to destroy the rocks, and I realized there was a bomb rock there. I was like, this will be some good damage. And he avoided it. I never meant to use the D8. Big mistake, pal. That is very, very low damage. Damn, I really should not have reruled. It's just that gambler's fallacy of like, it could be better next time. I could, I could get another bit. I could win big again. No, you fool. Could you like walk into this fire for me, please? There you go. Get your booty on the fire tonight. Make my day. Very nice. Okay. One more wave with this. I don't know how many times I'm going to reroll. I'd like to get my damage up to around six again. I don't think I'm going to get, get as lucky as I got before. I think that was a miracle pull, and I think I'm just an idiot. I got greedy. I was like, it could, it could be better. It could be so much better. No. Idiota. Okay, this is it. This is the one. We, we got we got good there. This is good. 7.39 damage, 11 fire rate. I realize a lot of that fire rate is from Pascal's candle, but also a lot of it isn't, so... I'm staying right here. Oh, for God's sake, that was a bad idea. I mainly meant for uh, interdimensional baby, but... Lighted Earthen, I'm not that into you. I'm just not that into you. Right, yeah, don't use the D8 again. That would be stupid. We also got more range, too. We basically only lost speed in this equation. And while speed is pretty important, honestly, the rest is much better. Especially now we have this Herming setup going on. I don't know why I didn't think with Conjoint to, to, sit, to like situate myself like this earlier an easy way to get damage on everything at once. There you go. Look, he's down. Come on, baby. Sit right on top of me. It never used to work if it was directly on top of you, but they, they changed something and it fixed it. Made it a lot better to use. Ah, oh, bugger you. You're bloody stupid ghosts. Right, two more waves, three more waves, maybe. That is that 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 is perfect. Look at that. Hitting both of them 
just right. This guy's got a lot more health, but he's going down just the same. Okay, we got it. And little spewer, I'm honestly just going to red rune. Red rune. Good. And we are aware. Right, yeah, so speed's going to be a problem, but I think room to room, we're going to be cleaning house. We're going to be doing really well. I don't think I need to use my prayer card anymore. I don't need to, and I don't need to trade HP away pretty much at all, apart from the actual devil deals that I get. Um, and four red hearts is more than enough, I think. Yeah, we definitely need to try and get our speed up if we can, because that's going to be rather annoying to just traverse from room to room. Especially, like... Having low speed is bad, but not all that bad. Going from high speed to low speed is devastating. It just feels so wrong. I just feel so sluggish. Really, Wrath, come, come this way. Beautiful. Yeah, we don't need to use prayer card again here. Let's hope for the love of Jeebus that we can go the right way this time. It'd be rather nice if we could pick the right direction the first time around, but never happens, does it? It just never happens. It would have to be a miracle for that to happen. Good, good. That enemy behaved. Didn't take forever for us, for us to kill. This item's really cool, where we have to, like, be a certain distance away for the Herming and Spectral to activate. I, I kind of like these items that, like, they don't force you to play differently, but they encourage you to play differently. I, I also like items that force you to play differently as well, don't get me wrong. But having some of these additions where it's like, hey, you've got a... You can gain this pretty sick advantage if you play in this specific way. Also, dead end, again. Beautiful. Went all the wrong ways, this floor. Why is the womb like this? Why does it have to be like this? Someone tell me. Um. Yeah, uh, I really like the way that, that that works. I like having the encouragement to play in a slightly different way. And it's not even a crazily different way with this item. Like, it's literally just you gain a benefit by standing further back from enemies. That's not crazy. Like, Lump of Coal has that exact same value proposition really as this item in the, in the fact that it just increases damage rather than giving the Hermit Spectral. But I still really like the addition of it. I still really, really like it. I think it's a great addition. You are getting destroyed, my love. Wow. That did not go so hot for you, did it? And a very good item as well. If that's... I was going to say, if that actually gives us fire, it's going to be wicked. And it did. And it gave us a significant amount too. We're up to, like, soy milk levels of fire rate with 7.39 damage. That's just ludicrous. Oh, no, my little ghost, you died. Oh, heck. I'm going to cry for him. Do you know what we also did as well? We watched a few films. We watched Deck the Halls with Dan DeVito in it, which was a pretty bad film, but, like, it was very enjoyable. <laughs> Like, the film is rated really poorly online. Um, it, it got like a six on IMDb, I think, which isn't bad. But it got like a it got like a six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like horrendously reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes. Which, to be honest, I don't really trust Rotten Tomatoes too much anymore, anyways. <laughs> it's like, like a film a film comes out that was okay but not great. 20%. Marvel film comes out that was trash. 94%. It's just like, eh, don't know how, how much I can trust this site anymore. If it seems to be that whenever a Marvel film comes out, it just gets like over 90% regardless of how good it was. Um, anyways. Anyways. Enough ranting about that. Yeah, and I, I thought it was alright. Also, rewatched a film that I've only seen once before and didn't remember anything about. Rewatched the film Sausage Party. That film is fucking crazy. <laughs> that film is not at all what I remembered it being, but it is fucking nuts. 
yeah. If you haven't seen that film, it's on Netflix. At least UK Netflix. It's wild, man. It's it's wild. It's pretty funny. It's like stupid funny though. It's not like good funny. <laughs> it's just really idiotic and dumb humor. But if you like that sort of thing, which I definitely do, then it's 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 got some really funny moments in it. Right. You have been bested. I think we're just gonna beeline the end of this run. Another black heart there, lovely. I'm really liking this blended heart item. Very, very strong. At first I was like, quality four, just to get some blended hearts. And then I was like, wait a minute. That makes all red hearts soul hearts. That's insane. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy. Yeah, we are outputting crazy damage. Oh. I was just about to say I get to listen to this fucking amazing music. And then I realized it's slowing down, unfortunately, because of um, Stopwatch. And I know there is a mod out there that, that changes that, where it just all the music always plays at full volume. But I kind of like it, even though it's slightly ruining this music. I kind of like the fact that it slows down the uh, music as well. I always forget how insanely good Stopwatch is. Because it's like, it's one of those items, like, by this point in the run, you kind of forget that you have it. But it's actually, like, helping an immense amount. Every enemy is reacting just a lot slower to everything that's happening. Also note how I went every which wrong way in the cathedral. Much like I did in the womb. Very good. Very nice. Do, 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 do. Oh, God. That boy drug me up. Oh, uh, another thing as well that I'm still, like... Are we still high? What's going on here? Why is this room still purple? What in the heck is going on here? Okay, no, we just broke everything. Everything's just purple now. Uh, another thing I didn't really mention about the 10k. This isn't set in stone yet, but something I kind of want to do is make myself a second channel. Um, I've spoken about this idea before, but I want to reiterate it. I want to make a second channel for, like, just general gaming. It, it's going to be a channel that has, like, no schedule. It's going to be a channel that, like, I don't have, like, oh, I will update, I will upload every day, or I will upload on these set days. It'll just be, I'm going to record games when I play them in my free time, if I feel like recording them. And then, um, obviously, obviously I'm not going to play them off camera if it's, like, a series game. But uh, then I'm going to upload them. But it's going to be games that I normally wouldn't post my main channel, that, that, that I'm going to have less of an audience for. Because I feel like there's two reasons I don't want to post it on the main channel. One, they just tend to get a lot less views. And YouTube does this thing where it's like, if you if you post videos that flop, it just kind of like drives views away from your channel. It's kind of bullshit, really. It, it, it really discourages you to try new things. Um, but regardless. Anyways, the other thing is I don't want people that really enjoy the Isaac content to have their feed flooded with content they don't want to see. So, I want to make a new channel, um, which I already have set up. It's just going to be called Turtle Melon rather than The Turtle Melon. Or Tootle Melon, as some people have suggested, which would be kind of a funny name for it. Um, but anyways, and yeah, it'll just be a channel where I upload me and Nevenim playing some games together. Like, I upload some, some of me and him playing Half-Life. I did eventually stop uploading it because she was getting really bad views on the channel. But I've still got all the recordings, and I will upload the rest of them to this other channel. Uh, I plan on doing that. I just need to edit the rest of them. I never got around to editing them. I still have them, though. Really enjoyed playing the game with him. Even if the videos never see the light of day, thoroughly worth playing the game with him because it was very, very enjoyable. The games themselves and just spending some time with Evan named was very fun. Um, but anyways, yeah. So basically, like, say... One, one, one of the reasons I want to do this, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, one of the reasons I want to do this is I have a tendency to start playing games that are really good and never finishing them um, just because I get distracted by other games or other things. But I feel like if I start a game for on a, on YouTube, even if it's on a channel that only has a few hundred subs and even if it, the, the videos are getting like 10 or 15 views, um, I feel like I'll, I'll feel more obligated to finish it, which I feel is good. <laughs> I feel like if I'm if I feel more obligated to finish the game, that's good because it'll motivate me to finish the game, and I'll actually get to finish some of these games that I've never finished before. So some of the examples: uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, a game I started but never finished; 
Cyberpunk 2077, a game I started but never finished. The Witcher 3, because that, that's getting a big update soon. Um, the bit like the next gen update, so it's called, but it's on PC as well. That's a game that I started but never finished, and I really enjoyed. All, all three of those games are games I really enjoyed, and there's other games out there as well that uh, like Ori and the Blind Forest, stuff like that. The Elden Ring, maybe I could do a series on that. There's just a bunch of games that I, I, I want to play. In my free time, I would plan on playing off of YouTube regardless. Everything's just purple now. Um, games that I would plan on playing regardless on my own. But I'm, I'm kind of like, hey, if I've got the if I've got the energy, the voice for it, why don't I just play them on my YouTube channel? But then at the same time, I was like, oh well, I don't want to flood the main channel with them because there might be a lot of people that don't like them. So what would be maybe be a better idea is if I create a new channel where. Um, where I can upload those videos and then also I wouldn't feel one of the reasons I stop a lot of the series I have by the way and I'll just kind of go into a little detail with this is people might have noticed that Brotato kind of died off Peglin died off things like that they all kind of died off it's normally not because that I've lost interest in the game or the views are super low I don't really care about views being lower it's usually because I run out of time to play the games like I I just don't have time on my schedule. So one nice thing with this second channel would be that it would be a no schedule channel. It it wouldn't be that, hey, Red Dead Redemption, I'm going to play through it and I'm going to upload one episode every single other day. Instead, it'll just be, I'm going to play it whenever I feel like it and for however long I feel like it. And I'm going to cut those episodes up into like, 45 minute segments or maybe even upload them as, as big long segments that, well, that's another question actually for anyone that likes this idea if i play a game for two uh, two and a half hours would you rather me cut that up into a few 45 minute segment episodes or me just upload the full two and a half hours of me playing it in one go but anyways i'll play it as much as i want on the day that i want to play it and um and then i'll just yeah, I'll upload it as is, and there'll be no real schedule to when I upload. So sometimes there'll be a week between episodes, sometimes there'll be a few days. It depends how much I want to play the game. And yeah, just an idea to add more content. And even people might wonder, oh, but aren't you going to miss out on the ad revenue? But those videos would be getting very low views anyway, so I don't really care about missing out on that ad revenue. And I don't really do YouTube for the money regardless. So either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one.